Returning from the All-Star break, the Floral Cup Series has been on quite the chaotic swing. Going from the Milwaukee Mile to the Pocono Raceway, now it's time for Super Speedway style racing at NASCAR's smallest venue with full throttle action. This is the brand new Atlanta Motor Speedway and despite its small size, a mile and a half can produce some super speedway style action, even if it's not as long as tracks like Daytona or Talladega. The Paintbrush 54 154 will be on full display tonight and as it stands, 7 minutes and 30 seconds remain in qualifying with over 15 drivers registered in the session and Andrew Cootie is currently the fastest of which. The man at the number 9 machine up at the top compared to Henry Kaloff, five thousandths of a second slower. Wesley Kutsnuff goes up into the fourth spot and Hunter Whitlock puts it into 11th. Drivers are still taking times right now and continuing to improve what they have on the board. So keep an eye out for the board on the top of your screen. It still is updating and drivers are just getting started. Hunter Whitlock now going to put it up into eighth and Joseph Lewis is on to his second lap. Number 28 machine in the Ford Mustang going to take it down to the apron as that is a viable part of the circuit. The front stretch here at Atlanta, unlike most super speedways, is especially narrow and a bit more challenging to navigate because its traditional layout is not meant for the full throttle output that these drivers are producing off the corner. Now, it looks like Joseph Lewis is going to adapt to it just fine. He goes up into sixth, and Ethan Workman's now going to be on the way. Workman, chasing win number two on the season, finds himself back on the track yet again. For those tuning in just to start this night off, great to have you all aboard as as always, I'll be your host for tonight's broadcast, David Kreutz. And as things get started here at Atlanta, we've gone to Darlington quite a few times this week. So it's a bit of a refresher going from one of the old-fashioned circuits where racing comes at a cost. You have to be a lot more careful. Tonight, we're going to see a bit more aggression. Drivers going all out when it matters the most. You are not going to see the same amount of caution that we've had in not only Ignite and the Octane Series, but we're also going to see it tomorrow in the Highline Racing League. Darlington is driven much different, almost the antithesis of super speedway racing and as a result you'll see less caution tonight and a little more reckless abandon as drivers push as hard as they can everyone has a chance doesn't matter if you're coming into this race as the points leader doesn't matter if this is your first career start or anywhere in between atlanta is the great equalizer in terms of pace and speed all throughout a run we expect to see some drivers getting into form once again, even if they have not been contenders all season long. Tonight's a great opportunity to jump into the frame and maybe turn some heads as Michael Deitch puts it 15th on the qualifying charts. He'll take it down to the bottom side of the track and Chance Parker will now be on the way. The rookie in the number 42 Clorox machine, a part-time schedule this season, has been able to put down a few top 10 runs, but nothing else as we've gotten things started here at Atlanta. Could be a great night to break out and go away from the norm as Anthony Trippi's now on the track and will lock it up in his Red Bull number 84. Only one more driver on the track right now, Michael Deitch, but there's still four minutes and 44 seconds remaining. So drivers still have the opportunity to head out to the track and those who haven't go as follows. Sean Rowe, and Max Molina, both of course teammates, and Brandon Rizmiller. And we're hearing reports that Joaquin Stewart, league owner, could be racing tonight. That is to be seen though if the 79 machine comes back out on the track. He was out on the track during practice, is not there anymore, but Anthony Trippi is now the only man taking a qualifying run. So how's about we ride on board with this number 84 machine and see what he's up to. This is Anthony Trippi take his first qualifying lap of the day. And as you can hear, the drivers are always going to be on the loud pedal tonight unless there is any issue. Full throttle, fourth gear, and that's the way it's going to go for one hundred laps. It's not going to be any different unless there is, of course, a wreck, any incident to keep an eye out for. The pack is going to be moving at over speeds of 170 miles an hour. Trippy at the start finish line goes 175. That will put him up into 16th, and this is the money lap. Looking to put it all together with one more run. He's going to get that momentum down to the bottom side, already two tenths of a second quicker than his most recent lap, and that will put him in contention for a top 10 start if he can get it even closer. 
Spencer coming down through turns three and four. The low line is preferred. He'll take it as close as he can down to the paint. Not going to chop down there to keep that momentum. And at the line, dropping down below the apron, Anthony Trippy will get there to the stripe and put himself up to 10th on the board exactly making his way into the top 10 and Trippy's gonna find himself now sliding up throughout the track and it looks like he's gonna slip it down to the bottom side and with his qualifying run over without anyone else coming on the track qualifying would be effectively done on that note Anthony Trippy's gonna be the final man out as it stands and your fastest man in qualifying currently is Andrew Cootie Cootie gonna be the leading man with two minutes and 31 seconds remaining so we've got a bit of time to show you the starting grid early for this race the paintbrush 54 154 sponsored by our friend zach todger always helping this league out he sponsored the race at auto club which is a barn burner with a fantastic finish and we're hoping for more of the same tonight as things get going very very soon looking above the skies of hampton georgia this is the brand new reconfigured atlanta motor speedway and it's the first track in oval racing in the united states to be designed primarily using iRacing as a development tool. The concept for this track was evaluated and it was created in iRacing and as a collaboration with the service, the track released and then in due time, the real world got this package as well. Still a mile and a half, but it is much different in terms of the way it drives and it's a bit of a different layout with more banking and a lot less wear on the surface, which gives these drivers the chance to all race around each other very, very close. So as we had a few minutes before things get on the way, how's about we take a look at the drivers that will line up on the starting grid? Without further ado, let's get right into it and find out who makes up the starting grid for the Paintbrush 54-154 here in the Atlanta Motor Speedway. To top the charts, it'll be the number 9 machine of Andrew Cootie keeping himself on top. Cootie's there with a 31.31 pole position in his number 9 Chevy Camaro. Then from there, second place at Pocono, and he's going to be starting second today. It's Henry Calloff for the number 63 team, now up there in the second spot, 6-1,000 of a second off of the pole position. It's going to be 4 Truck Series broadcaster River Page, third on the board inside of row number two, starring just a tenth of a second behind Andrew Cootie, and actually a hundredth of a skin now, as he'll be on the third spot on the board, just ahead of Wesley Kutznuff, returning with the vengeance. Fourth place for the returning 0-2 team, with Ethan Workman rounding out the top five with a 31.334 to one thousandth of a second off of Wesley Kutznuff's best lap. Then from there, it's going to be Dustin Pickle in the number six spot. 21 machine looking for a rebound race, and tonight could be the perfect opportunity. 31.358 for Dustin as Joseph Lewis puts himself in seventh with his 31.362 dead heat with Ross Corlett, but it looks like Joseph Lewis put down the time first, and he will be given the seventh spot after all. Xander Prestige will make up the ninth spot, and Anthony Trippi will make up the tenth. That will round out your top ten with a 31.376 for the number ten spot held by Anthony Trippi. Then from there, going to be Hunter Whitlock in the eleventh position, and Chance Parker then in twelfth, and James Thurston, who's been dominant as of recent, puts himself in thirteenth with a 31.4, not the qualifying he was expecting, but he's got a ways to go as he starts right beside Alex Jones and a 31.448. Then from there, going to be Hunter Bogdan in the 15th spot with a 31.478, and Michael Deitch will be 16th with a 31.504. Alexander Balderas will round out the drivers with a time lap, a 32.698, and it'll be Max Molina starting in the 18th spot, Sean Rowe, his teammate, starting in 19th, and Bryce Hammock, your race control, in 20th, and Joaquin Stewart to be 22nd. He might be starting, but Brandon Rizmiller is the final confirmed driver, 21st on the board, as he finishes out your starting grid from Atlanta. This is the Paintbrush 54 154, and now it's time to meet your starting grid as they find themselves on pit road, waiting for the command to grab a gear and get things going. And as we look at the back bumper of Andrew Cootie right now, he will be one of the drivers leading them off of pit road. He's got Henry Kaloff right there as well. The rest of the field all coming together, waiting for another great night of racing. 100 laps at a very fast track, so tonight is expected to fly by. It might be one of the shortest races of the season, akin to something like the Milwaukee Mile race we saw just two weeks ago. Now, with the season back in a rhythm, it's Atlanta 
And after Daytona, which was a thriller in itself, Super Speedway Racing is still quite the wild card. We don't know who's going to be the favorite going into the night, and we sure don't know who's going to win it come the very end. A lot of drivers hungry for their first chance at victory lane. River Page got very close at Milwaukee, defending his Devin Colt Memorial Trophy. Just wasn't able to make it happen. Daniel Mosteller and Chat, great to have you aboard. And it looks like now a lot of Iora drivers and the two-time Iora champion in Chat watching to see if one of these guys can get get it done or if the pole sitter in Andrew Cooties got the best shot to come through. Drivers now get on the way. Andrew Cooty going to be the first of which not to be outdone. It's going to be Henry Kaloff right beside. And these two drivers, as quick as ever, they've been putting together very good runs. Of course, Andrew Cooty, one of the drivers who's been a dominant force ever since the beginning of Season 2. He was a back-to-back -back winner to start off Season 2, then left the league, went part-time, and came back and eventually found himself as a contender going for another win this season, getting it done at both road course races. Races, the Circuit of the Americas, and also at Sonoma. So two-time winner again. He's looking for his third, and Henry Kaloff up top is looking for win number three. He's got a lot on the line as well. Still looking to get it done for the CB Fabricating crew. They were very close to a first victory last week. Now putting that behind them and trying to look forward to what is next. Another great opportunity and River Page, Wesley Kutznuff, and all the field behind them know it's a great chance for themselves as well. Everyone's got a shot at Atlanta. It's quite the wild card every time we go here and we're looking forward to nothing less than a thrilling show with a lot of drivers putting it on the line from start to finish. Now let's see who puts on a line to get the green flag rolling. Let's put it in motion. Green flag is waving from Atlanta. We're green indeed for the paintbrush 54, 154. And Andrew Cooney leads the way in Hampton, Georgia. And as the field roars by, turns one and two, it's going to be Andrew Cootie up top, but it's going to be River Page, your effective race leader. Number 24 machine finds himself at the head of the field now as they take it through three and four. Bottom lane, the 24's got it, and the rest of the field right now going to have to succumb to the double file tendency of New Atlanta. It might be a super speedway like package, but it's very hard to make passes unless you're clearly the quicker driver. Right now, the drivers are going to be mostly side by side, one row deep, maybe of three wide, but that's not going to last much longer. Alex Jones is going to have to fade back here, and that Jones will. He'll take it back into the bottom of the top 15 race here, as it's now Page leading with Henry Kaloff right behind. These two drivers are going to stay with each other. Andrew Cootie's got some help up top, but so far, the bottom line is superior, and that's the way it's going to stay, heading into lap four of 100. Very quick start for all of the field right now as they get their bearings in. Looks like the pack racing they are no strangers to, and they're pulling off some good moves already. Veteran driving to keep it up in front. Alexander Balderas making a hard charge. He goes three wide with Wesley Kutznuff and now wants to make it three wide with River Page. Sit down to the middle of the pack here. He's got himself in the middle groove. Wesley goes high. He'll lose some time and Balderas now finds himself fourth just outside of the podium race and only five laps in this time around. Big moves being made. River Page capitalizing on some good qualifying position. He's not had to do all too much. He has that lead, and so far, nobody threatening to take it away from him. And that's the way it's gone as we get things going here in Atlanta. The new Atlanta giving these drivers a chance to run side by side, not have to worry about pace, tire strategy out the window. It's all about being quick and keeping it there. We had a very long run at Daytona, though. It was a wild card race, but it came down to a lot of natural strategy, which we don't see often when the Four World Cup Series goes to super speedways. It all came down to a last lap thriller, of course, but for the most of the way, it was all about keeping yourself in the right path 
attack, having that tire strategy, and navigating through the field despite all the troubles some drivers and packs had. James Thurston takes it down to the bottom side. He knows what it takes to win in the Super Speedway and now finds himself right down low as he looks to take him down to the start finish line in his control. Andrew Cootie going to be split on the three wide side. Now River Page goes up high and Cootie stays middle. Three abreast yet again. Balder is going to be in the wall. He will fade back big and now Thurston's going to lead the way. Number four machine out in front. Seven through. Second pack is forming way on back. Taking a look now at guys like Ethan Workman, Xander Prestige. Also looking at guys such as, of course, the 0-2 machine there on your screen. That's Wesley Kutznow fading back to 14th. And this second pack working to get themselves out of harm's way. Just hoping to have a clean start here, knowing how much can go wrong. If you don't prioritize avoiding what goes wrong, you can't find out what goes right. But Henry Kaloff and James Thurston remain out in front, first and second respectively, as we'll come around to the green flag yet again. No issues so far. Nine laps in of 100, and Thurston's got the lead. Not too far behind. It is Henry Kaloff, and they're looking to take it single file to the line yet again. Lap number nine on FTN, provided to you courtesy of our friends at Tango Paints. And for the best eye racing liveries and paint schemes on the market, for the best price that you can't beat, visit Tango Paints on Twitter. We thank Tolo and Deeply for starting this partnership. If you want to represent your racing identity to the fullest extent, prices start at $50. And we'd love to have you aboard as a member of the Tango Paints family. For creating schemes for drivers such as Ryan Andrew and the McGoney Setup Shop family, those drivers very competitive. And for all competitive drivers, no matter what you race, be sure to check out Tango Paints as they bring lap nine to you live on FTN. If you want to learn a bit more about Tango Paints, take a look at our brief message from the Tango Paints team as we head back to the racing in just a moment's notice. As we return to action, 11 laps in of 100, we once again would like to thank Tango Paints for their partnership here live on FTN. Down to the bottom side, Henry Kaloff now going to take that race lead, looking away down low. Kaloff's got the top spot, and then from there, it's going to be Sean Rowe side by side with James Thurston, putting some pressure down, and all of a sudden, things are getting dicey as they take it three wide once again. Aggression ramping up more and more through the first dozen. Kaloff's got the race lead, taking it from James Thurston, but it's been back and forth and back and forth again. Leading man is now going to be River Page up high, and it is going to be Kaloff back down low. It looks to be a continuing back and forth process. Still, it's no solution, no clear leader, but now Kaloff takes him to the strike yet again. And the pack stays in good formation right now. Still double file. These drivers have chosen not to take it aggressive, which is the right thing to do, especially so early. 100 laps at Atlanta. Yes, they fly by, but at the same time, why ruin your race early when you can make it to the end? 50 laps of this race really do not matter. That's the first 50 at least. If you can make it there, log those laps, have some fun while you're doing so. You're doing the right thing here. You do not want to risk your equipment. No faster pairs again here in the four World Cup Series. It was a one-time thing last week at Pocono. It's not returning tonight. You do not have any leeway for a major mistake. And with the super speedway nature of the big one, which we might see, drivers are now flying and the caution comes out early, but everyone saves it. Magnificent job. Sean Rowe and Henry Kaloff. A trigger finger puts out the caution, but Rowe and Kaloff do a tremendous job in saving it. Man, oh man, that was some real work on the steering wheel. Wheel. Great job for the both of them there. That's very impressive to keep us on our way. Thankful that they did get it going, but that could have been much, much worse. All in all, fantastic effort, and we'll bring you an instant replay of what just happened. Caution is out as Sean Rowe and Henry Kaloff nearly lose it, but it looks like they keep it all the same, and we'll take it back 15 more seconds. By this point, it looks like it's already going to be in motion for Sean Rowe, and now we'll take it right back yet again. Looking at Sean Rowe in slow-mo here, and you're going to see coming off the corner, Henry Kaloff going to be 
right there with James Thurston. Page is going to tap Cal off. They'll beat and bang once, twice. Caution came out by this point, and you can see how Roe gets it loose but does indeed save it. Despite some contact, they all keep it going, and it's a really, really classy effort to not take the yellow and just go with it. They really were fighting it till the very end, and for Sean Rowe, Henry Kaloff, commendable effort to keep us under green. Oh, it would have been under green without any issue. Yellow flag flies out as a precaution. Thankfully, both drivers involved will get away from it unscathed, and the yellow flag is out for the first time today. Leader Henry Kaloff, now I'm going to be back of the field as James Thurston puts himself to the top of the board. Exiting pit road first, then from there going to be River Page, followed by Andrew Cootie and Ross Corlett will now be in fourth with Alexander Valdez rounding at the top five. Then from there, Xander Prestige, Dustin Pickle, who will lead Wesley Kutznoff, Brandon Rizmiller, and Ethan Workman. That makes up your top ten and Chance Parker's eleventh, Hunter Bogdan is twelfth, and Henry Kaloff is thirteenth. He's still on pit road right now and it looks like a few drivers still making it in, but all said and done for the leaders, James Thurston now has the new race lead, number four machine, out in front. And once again, green flag set to fly before lap 20. First caution going to come out as a precaution. Thankfully, these drivers, a lot of skill displayed in saving the equipment. Fantastic job from both Kaloff and Sean Rowe, but it's still going to cost them. They're now down beyond the top 12. Sean Rowe is going to be in 16th. Henry Kaloff is in 19th. So despite the fact they don't have any major damage, looks like some optional repair. They'll get back on the way, not unscathed, but still with a fighting chance. 16 laps of 100 both drivers back on the move and already we find ourselves under yellow for the first time tonight one lap to green this time by 17 laps in of 100 and it looks to be a single file start with drivers still not choosing but that will change when we come down through that straightaway the choose rule will be in effect and it will come down to the choose cone they'll be using the pit exit cone to decide where the drivers will go on this restart and it's almost a certainty that James Thurston gonna opt to go down to the lower groove. Now we'll find out whether or not he surprises us, but I believe that's going to be the choice and a call of action for the number four. And he will take it down low, bring River Page with them, and Andrew Cootie goes as well. Leader on the high side is going to change, and it will be Alexander Balderas and Ross Corlett first and second up top. Corlett's got the advantage though, and now everyone getting ready for the first restart of the day. 17 laps in of 100. Thurston goes down to the apron to save a bit more fuel and just like that we're ready to go once again cch motorsports finds themselves up in front first and second a one two effort so far corlette still chasing win number one cootie looking to put himself in true championship contention with a third win and his first on the oval still eludes him let's see what he has in store this time buys the green flag will be extended waiting one more time around green flag at lap 19 as the cch trio is now for second and third taking a look at dustin pickle he'll be starting up in front as river page is sent to the rear of the field for causing the most recent incident cautions out river page gets a black flag for his involvement in the wreck and he'll be given an end of line penalty as a result the miata gang designs machine moves to the back and now time to see what he can do clawing back from the rear of the field caution out for First time today, Andrew Cootie will lead, and he's got his teammates there as well, with now Dustin Pickle dropping back. He'll go right behind Brandon Rizmiller, and it looks like that's going to be temporary as Cootie going to see his teammate line up right on his back bumper. And now as the field gets set to go once again, it was an overall clean run to start this one off. Double file racing for the most part, a bit of contact, sending Kaloff and Sean Rowe nearly around, but all things considered, a good way to start the race. A lot of healthy battles between these drivers, not a lot of over-aggression to this point, but now 
getting that first yellow, it can change a lot. We might see cautions begin to breed other cautions, and that's certainly what you don't want to see as we have just gotten the race on the way. Cautions could come into more of a frequent development, and after such a good start, we really don't want to see these drivers take it downhill. Great racing for the first 15 laps. Restart at lap 19, and we'll be back on the move here in the paintbrush 54, 154, as the green flag will fly yet again. Restart number one with the iRacing official pace guard down low. Andrew Cootie's going to lead Ross Corlett, and the green flag is going to wave yet again. We're back on the way for Atlanta. One, two, three for CCH, and the green flag will wave once more for Andrew Cootie. As the field's gonna fly by yet again, they're already gonna be mostly single file. Some contact back on the field, nothing major. Everyone gonna be able to keep it straight. Michael Deitch goes down to the bottom side. Nice move for him to get by Wesley Kutznuff. He'll take Henry Cal off there with him. And all said and done to the back of the field, battling gonna be seen up in front. Xander Prestige in the number one Empire Designs Machine looking to take himself up to the front. But now the teammates working together up ahead. Bad news for anyone else, CCH Motorsports the caution fly yet again. Yellow flag going to be out for a huge wreck. Driver spinning and still making contact. There's Whitlock, another driver involved, Ethan Workman, and a caution will indeed breed another. Yellow flag out for the second time, and now chaos ensues. It's the big one here, and the yellow flag already returns on the track. We'll take an instant replay, find out just what happened, and see who caused this one as the caution flies for the second time. And as we take a look now at half speed, bringing it all back up into frame, looks like Bogdan going to tag Whitlock, send Ethan Workman around, that's going to bring him up to Joseph Lewis, and also going to tag Alex Jones, and Hunter Whitlock not going to be able to avoid Hunter Bogdan, then sent into Ethan Workman, so a chain reaction, and that's going to bring out your second yellow immediately after your first. Back to that cautions, bring out the yellow flag for the second time today. Cautions out yet again. And we will return to the green flag, hopefully before lap 25. But now that's no longer a certainty. 21 laps in, Andrew Cootie is a race leader. And now the back of the field continuing to catch up. Green flag, flat. Of course, we saw it, it flew. Now we're going to have it back on the way under yellow. Second caution of the day so far in 22 laps after a very small incident that brought out our first and one of the bigger wrecks we're going to see today already happening as our second. So a bit of an up and down relationship to kick this one off. Andrew Cootie going to be first, Ross Corlett then second, and Dustin Pickle is in third. Xander Prestige going to be there in fourth with Brandon Rizmola rounding out the top five. Max Molina, Alan. Alexander Balderas, Alex Jones, Henry Kaloff, and Michael Deitch will make up the top 10, and that's the way they will run so far, 22 in, out of 100. Been a fantastic show so far. We get those green flag runs in, but some cautions coming in succession, which keep us now at a much slower pace. Cautions out once again here at Atlanta. 22 laps in of 100. Very few drivers come down a pit road, mainly those involved with the incident that we just saw. It looks like James Thurston going to join Anthony Trippi, Chance Parker, Hunter Whitlock, Ethan Workman, and Wesley Kutznuff as drivers outside of the main pack. Now it's going to be Hunter Whitlock on the way as the leaders will round turns three and four and find themselves in frame momentarily. No movement here on pit road, but now as Andrew Cootie comes by, the number nine machine will put himself in the picture yet again. It looks like Anthony Trippi will be put back on the lead lap and Cootie will lead the way with his teammates right behind him. And now with one lap to green, set to get the drivers choosing up or down as Anthony Trippi gets himself right back on the lead lap. Andrew Cootie, Ross Corlett, and Dustin Pickle, a perfect trio to lead this race. And they were able to work together successfully enough to get those top three spots in a row. Xander Prestige now going to be in the fourth spot. It's going to be Brandon Rizmiller, then fifth, and Maxima Lina in sixth. And those drivers all working together to make it happen. Now it's going to be... 
the Empire Designs machine in fourth. Brandon Rizmo, the 95, is then fifth, and your defending champion is going to go down low, choosing to go to the bottom side. He will go down with a good majority of the rest of the field. The CCH teammates, they opt to go up to the top, and Alexander Balderas will join them as well. So some big movements here, 23 laps in, and it looks like the field already in formation. So maybe we'll get one more lap of caution. Maybe not. That's up to the admins to decide here. The drivers are now double file, looking forward to getting the racing back underway. Lap 24 of 100, and we'll be on the move yet again. As the field comes by once more, the iRacing official pace cars is set to drop down to the inside line and head back to pit road, leaving Andrew Cootie and Xander Prestige in full control. Teammates on the high side, independent drivers right down low, and they're all going to get back into work once again. Green flag will fly 23 laps in with Andrew Cootie once again in control of the second restart of the day. And now as the drivers come down the back straightaway, once again, Andrew Cudi takes his team to the top of the board. Alexander Balderas remains right behind him, but has not made the move, opting to keep himself on the high side as opposed to making anything of a different move down low. Xander Prestige can keep him honest there, so no reason to drop down until now. Balderas goes down to the bottom side and takes Sean Rowe with him. Now a challenge being made to the teammates up on the high side. Driver trying to get out of the gridlock, and it's going to be Alexander Balderas leading that Front. The number 95 machine takes himself to the race lead for just a brief moment. Andrew Cudi now going to be pushed back out further. Ross Corlett stays on the back bumper as they go three wide momentarily. A bit of chaos here, but Alex Jones settles right back in. cootie has got that advantage. The number 91 of Ross Corlett is there too. And Dustin Pickle is going to be third. One, two, three up top as the number 95 of Baldera still does not have enough help. Cootie's going to block him down to the low lane and now try to use both runs to keep that momentum he'll go down low then up high and vice versa using both lanes to keep that race lead controlling everything that he can super speedways are most often unpredictable when it comes to generating runs but here in atlanta you can try to predict them to the best of your ability with less racing room but baldera is still gonna take it up high and break up the teammates as dustin pickle now gonna fade back a bit more river page gonna get in the middle of the equation too and now with andrew cootie having no help up in front. He's going to have to work for it as Sean Rowe takes Balderas down to the bottom side. Rowe's got the race lead and just like that new man out in front, Sean Rowe still chasing his first win of the season. Just like that, it is going to be Sean Rowe out in front with Alexander Balderas. Two drivers winless this season. Make it three on the podium as Xander Prestige puts himself up in front. 28 laps in of 100. Just like that, the number one machine finds himself up on top for a brief moment and now takes it back in the third. Up and down. Balderas chooses to go up high. He's going to have help from River Page and James Thurston. They'll all be working together on the higher groove, trying to make something happen. Rowe's going to block in shades of Andrew Cootie. He'll get filed out as well. Balderas back to the point with Xander Prestige right down low. Xander keeps the bottom side. Looks like it's going to be Balderas holding his head up high and keeping his car there too. One two, three. Separate by only one-tenth of a second toll. Owen and chat, thank you for stopping by. Only one mention tonight. At Italy, only 100 laps, so we can't get to lap 109, but great to have you supporting lap 9 as well. As always, once again, the official graphic design partner of FTN, Tango Paints, and they bring great paint schemes every week for Joey Stone. It's a shame he's not here tonight, but either way, when he comes back, I'm sure he'll have many more great paint schemes to show us as the Miata Gang's machine sees Alexander Balderas go up top. Caution flies. The number 95's around, and James Thurston goes there, too. Alexander Balderas is going to end Sean Rowe's race involving the number 99 there, too. Caution's out, and the 95 is in big trouble after that one.
the caution's out yet again, and it's going to be Alexander Balderas, the cause of this one. Looks like we're going to take it back and see whether or not he was alone in being the cause. Instant replay, Balderas, Sean Rowe, James Thurston, and you could see by the point that the caution was due to fly, he was leading the way. Xander Prestige there as well. Let's see if Balderas really was the reason for this one here. He's down low on the bottom side. River Page getting there as well. Xander Prestige going to tap him, get down low. Balderas drifts up high slightly, then comes down again and is not able to take the push. Xander Prestige finishes him off, then gets Sean Rowe, and that will collect James Thurston as well. So going to be tough to call from that angle. We're going to run it back a few more seconds and try to take another look at it from the rear view of Alexander Balderas and his number 95. Maybe there's more that we can see as we'll take an instant replay once more, take it 20 more seconds back and try to understand whether or not Balderas is at fault or if maybe Xander Prestige gave a bit too hard of a shove. Taking it back once again, you'll see Xander Xander Prestige right behind Balderas and the number 95 machine was the race leader at the time of the incident. Prestige held a straight wheel, Balderas drifts up just a bit, comes down low, and by that point, he's up and over. So Balderas wiggled and he's not going to be able to keep it straight. That's what ends up with the number one machine tagging him once and then twice. And just a bit of a wiggle is going to do all that. Sean Rose Knight is almost over immediately. You can see now he's a motor blue. And just like that, caution is out yet again. Balderas, Sean Rowe, James Thurston among the many involved. And the green flag going to be delayed yet again. 32 laps in. Another big incident as we look at Pit Road. It is busy, but Henry Kaloff is now your new race leader. And with Henry Kaloff out in front, 32 laps in, the number 63 machine's got a great opportunity to keep himself at the head of the field tonight, looking for that first win on the season. He did a fantastic job keeping himself up front at Pocono, using a different tire strategy to sort of manage his race and eventually compete for the race win despite having an older set of Goodyear rubber. Now, tires, they don't matter all too much. I don't think they matter in the slightest, of course, here in Atlanta. You're going high speed almost all of the way and we're getting an interview request from river page here number 24 machine would like to step in the broadcast booth so we've got a bit of time it appears we'll see if we can fit him in here henry kaloff gonna lead the way one lap to green so maybe not this caution and we'll tell him that next yellow flag we will have river page in as there's only one lap to green as it stands taking it back this time by 33 laps in of 100 page gonna be choosing the high side of the piers henry kaloff off will lead him down to the choose zone we'll see who takes what as the drivers opt to go to the bottom of the top now it's high or low Kaloff decides first the rest of the field is sure to follow And one driver going to park it there because he's going to get a penalty. That looks to be Xander Prestige as he blinks in and out. He will be getting a penalty for not making the choose rule in adequate time. Everyone else going to make it around, but the number one machine's in huge trouble here. Gets it back on the way. And as we saw, number 63 of Henry Kaloff goes down low with Alex Jones right up high. Then Andrew Cootie's going to be third. Hunter Whitlock now going to be scored in the fifth spot just beside Brandon Rismiller. And it looks like the number Nine and 91 are side by side yet again. Balderas, Wesley Kutznuff both retiring from this race. Yellow flag flying for the third time today. 33 laps in and on to lap 34. We will go. Pace car drops down to the bottom side. Time to get back on the move once more. Kaloff and Alex Jones first and second as they come back to the green flag. Underway for restart number three. And Atlanta sees Henry Kaloff as the new race winner. Of course, winner is ended now. He's the leading man and might be in the position to get it done. Kaloff now going to lead the field down the back straightaway. Good run there for the number 63 machine. He's got himself out in front with Andrew Cootie working on his back bumper two. And further on back, you'll see Ross Corlett in third. One, two, three. Single file right now. Kaloff going to be able to lead the field out with not much trouble. And it looks like now the number 63 machine going to be seeing his competition go up top. Number nine takes it to the high side. Ross Corlett does there too. Alex Jones now going to come to the aid of Kaloff. We'll see if he 
chooses to stay down there, he will not. And now the drivers slot back in. Single file, Sean Rowe going to retire from tonight's race as well, leaving us now with 15 drivers on the lead lap. 35 laps in of 100 here in the paintbrush, 54, 154. And drivers so far have seen the best and the worst of Super Speedway racing at a shorter track. It's a short Super Speedway, of course, coming in at only a mile and a half in length, but still has given us quite a load of action to this point. However, right now, drivers are logging laps with a bit less aggression. You'll see now Ethan Workman making the riskiest of moves, a side-by-side -side pass, and River Page going to go for more of the same. Number 24 machine goes right up high. Page going to be there in his Ford Mustang, and the top side going to be taken by the 24 team as they hope to make up some more spots here. Nobody else up high, though. Not much you can do when everyone else is going to leave you on your own, hanging up on the high side. Really the worst place to be right now is the Miata Gang Machine. Hopes to get a bit more out of that momentum. Looks like right now only the side draft working down the corners and the straightaways, not so much. So right now he's going to be still slotted out of line. River Page beats and bangs with Rizmiller once, does not go for it again. And Andrew Cootie leads him down the line. 38 laps in of 100. Now Cootie's got his team Make right behind in Ross Corlett, and that's the best place to be if you're a driver. Knowing your teammate, he's right there with you, gonna support you all the way. CCH Motorsports is a very tight knit bunch, so when they're out there up in front of the field, they will stick together as long as they can. And right now, without Dustin Pickle there, they're still holding on quite well, first and second respectively, with no major charge from any other driver. Right now, of course, Henry Kaloff gonna be running in third, but the top two uh, remain conjoined. Not bad at all. These two drivers keeping it together up in front. Consistency is key. Not going to drive all too aggressive and they're just working with what they got right now. That is the key to their success as Andrew Cootie continues to lead the way. 39 laps in of 100. Ross Corlett going to be second. Henry Kaloff then third. And to round out your top five, it's going to be both Alex Jones and River Page battling now side by side. Taking a look further back to guys like Rizmiller and Xander Prestige. Double file multiple rows deep and now a bit more aggressive driving from these guys of course prestige going to take it to the high side he was as high as the third position earlier in this race and looking to get back to that position if he can 40 laps through, of course, still a ways to go until the very end, but getting past that first half is what matters the most. Putting it all aside, going for a better second half, improving upon what you've already learned. That's the key tactic to becoming a better racing driver from start to finish right now. These drivers putting on a great showcase of skill, and even though we've had quite a few wrecks already, one of which might have not even been worth a caution, and two of which just a few minor misjudgments, which lead to a bit more of a chain reaction action as the racing goes on. That is the consequence of having everyone on even pace. When everyone is so quick, if someone slows down, you're not going to have enough time to react to it, even if you're the best of drivers. Sometimes you just get caught up in the act, and we see big wrecks in the real world. It happens here in the virtual space as well. Page remains with Ross Corlett, and it looks like Andrew Cootie still finds himself the race leader. 42 laps in of 100. They'll take it down the back straightaway all over again, and it's going to be Cootie still up in front but with River Page now looking down low beating and banging with Corlett might not be for long as we take a look off the quarter panel camera and as we take a look at this camera perspective, you're going to see that Andrew Cootie right now is working on the high side, but River Page is getting closer. Now he has some help from Xander Prestige and Alex Jones too. And when that bottom groove gets formed up, more often than not, it is the dominant line. It seems to have a bit more momentum by nature. So if drivers can use it to their advantage, it is the best possible tool that can be utilized for any success. Whether it's getting a few more positions, going for the lead, going for the race win, if that bottom line gets working and it gets together it can become much quicker than the high side and much easier but right now most drivers remain up top not choosing to take down to the bottom side as it's a bit of a gamble here at 44 laps in of 100 that's just the way it is taking it down to the back straightaways exit Andrew Cootie there with Ross Corlett Henry Kaloff now takes it down low and Henry's got a load of speed this will bring the bottom groove back into contention great stuff for every driver 
Harper involved, and now the low line is back in play. Look at the high side will keep their dominance, but not for much longer. Great maneuver there for Kaloff to take the lead, but he knows that River Page is a very aggressive pusher. As it stands, River Page going to be in the second spot on the bottom side, but he was involved in one of the first incidents of the day, and the very first of which, as a matter of fact, that's what led to our first big incident. But right now, maybe it won't be the same. River Page, of course, getting that first warning end of line penalty, and now he's back there hoping to keep it cleaner if he wants to go until the final lap, lap 100. 46 laps in of 100, as a matter of fact, and it is still Andrew Cooley up in front. Henry Kaloff is still there low, and the 63 machine has himself in a good spot to keep on going, even if the low line still not giving enough support to grab that late race lead and put it in front of CCH duo that remains up top and look at who's there too. Dustin Pickle now throwing the high side. All three of the CCH Motorsport drivers are together and they're looking to make something happen. With more of the drivers the teammates getting closer it becomes that much harder for anyone else to make a move. They have that high side in full control. The best move for any other drivers to make that low line more dominant. Get around the teammates and split them up by force. And now as they come through yet again, it's going to be Andrew Cootie and Henry Kaloff side by side with some help from River Page down low. Saying the prestige is there. Alex Jones is going to be eighth and to round out the top ten defending champion Max Molina there as well. Now what you might see from the drivers that are up in front, not a lot of them have a win this season. And while a lot of rookies have gotten it done and gotten the checkered flag, many of which are not up in front today. River Page, Ross Corlett, Dustin Pickle, Henry Kaloff, Xander Prestige, Hunter Bogdan, Alex Jones, all do not have victories. They are second through eighth right now. Andrew Cootie has won. Ethan Workman and Axel Molina have won. But for the most part, a lot of drivers here chasing their first chance at a checkered flag this season. This is the best they've looked all season long, and they've got a chance to keep it going and maybe come home with their first career checkered flag first of the season, breaking some long winless streaks. Even guys like Sean Rowe early in this race. Alexander Balderas, Anthony Trippi, Michael Deitch, they do not have wins either. A majority of the field does not have a win going into tonight. So Andrew Cooney, he's looking to take his third, but the rest of the field is hungry for their very first, either on the season or in all of their history in this league. Chance Parker going to go down to the bottom side. He's a lap machine, lets the field go through, and 50 laps in of 100. River Page takes it down to the bottom side, trying to get that halfway bonus. Who will get it done at the line side by side for a lap number 50 page down low but Andrew Cootie keeps that momentum and it's simple right now with the teammates together nobody can stop CCH the motorsports crew keeps it up in front as now 50 laps to go it is going to be half the race down half the race remaining and getting through that first part's the most important bit now time to see what they've got in store from this point onward And it's been a great effort so far from the teammates of Ross Corlett, Dustin Pickle, and Andrew Trudy keeping their team out in front without anyone else stopping them. You'll see River Page right down low. He'll take it down to the bottom side yet again. And the number 24 machine, while not having the help from Kaloff for Prestige, he needs to take the lead. He's still taking some good shots at it and might have a chance to really put it all together in the case. We get down to a late race run and now some beating and banging side by side. Corlett and River Page, they're going to be and bang yet again. Page goes up top and deliberately shoves him, and that's going to cost the low line quite a lot of time. Just like that, Hunter Bogdan now going to pull up into the top five, and after his first career top five last week, Bogdan looking to keep that momentum up and maybe go for his second consecutive after over a season without one top five. Now he's looking at getting two top fives in back-to-back -back races, but now the high side has River Page too, and all of a sudden it's Henry Kaloff's responsibility to work it down to the bottom groove. Nobody else working with that number 63. Up top is the way to go. And Page now going to try to take it high as Dustin Pickle is going to now lead Henry Kaloff. The teammates are getting split up and River Page doing the bidding of the rest of the field. 
Now, even if CCH Motorsports is getting split up right now, what you do see is that Andrew Cudi and Ross Corlett are beginning to run away, getting more and more of an advantage, not at all what the rest of the field would like to see. And River Page is going to be there in third right now, trying to keep his momentum going and keeping these guys apart. But it's a challenge because now Dustin Pickle leads the low side. So now CCH Motorsports leads not only the high groove, but the low groove. And everyone else is boxed in. But now Pickle goes down low and will abandon the bottom side. And Page now has a chance to go down a low groove yet again. Let's ride on board for one lap with Xander Prestige as he's in the thick of the lead race battle. And as we take this look on board with Xander Prestige, you'll see how close all these drivers are to one another. Doesn't matter if you're up in front of the field or all the way in the back. Right now, the main pack is 11 drivers separate by only one second. Dustin Pickles, the last of which right now, he fades back a bit further than he was before, but still going to be in contention if push comes to shove. 44 laps to go as it stands, and Andrew Cudi leads the way as River Page once again beats and bangs with Ross Corlett, takes Ross up the track. This is about the third time they've gone at it in this race and River is not going to hold any punches. He is going to keep pressuring Ross up high. Keeps that 91 up on the top. Doors them once again. They'll continue dooring each other which gives guys like Xander Prestige and Henry Kaloff more of an opportunity to make time back up. 43 laps to go and River Page is going to lose more time as a result. Not at all what he should be doing here but it looks like it's going to become nature for this 24 as he loses more time and now finds himself behind and two of the three big teammates of the day, Xander Prestige, now finds himself in the middle of them. And Xander chasing his first career win in the 4 World Cup Series. Tonight might be the night for him to break out. He's a, not a rookie per se, but this is his biggest full-time campaign so far in his career. And he's got a chance to go all the way for gold for the very first time tonight. He's waited over a season's worth of racing to get this chance. And now second with 42 laps left. Not a lot stands in his way. Only one driver and only 41 now laps just ahead. He's got to make one pass in 41 laps time, but that is easier said than done. This competition, it is fierce. And since everyone's on the same level of pace, doesn't matter if you're in the back or in the front, River Page goes way down low here, swerves back up top, and it looks like Page going to send himself to the back of the field, goes down to the apron, and just like that, River going to be scored in the seventh spot now with Henry Kaloff drifting down low. Great save there. Everyone keeps it green. Nice moves from everyone in the pack to keep us going. Now we'll get it back on the way with a little less trouble, a little bit of a smaller pack. It is Andrew Cooney. Ross Corlett in total team control as they take us down to the stripe yet again for what would be lap number 62 next up on the agenda. And Page is going up to the apron, wrecks himself and disconnects. Nobody else can get involved. Andrew Cootie leads the way. That could have been a much worse issue if River Page did not despawn immediately. But he's going to press Alt F4 and have at it. Race is over for River Page. He's going to be disconnecting. And now 39 laps left with one less driver in the picture. And now it looks like it's even more certain that Andrew Cootie's got a shot to take it home for himself. Ross Corlett going to be there as well. And Hunter Bogdan's got a lot of trouble here. You're limping down to the line and not quite sure what the issue is in specific. Taking a close-up look now at the suspension on the tires and it looks like nothing we can see there. And looking from another angle, it looks like still more the same. Bogdan is limping at 8 miles an hour here on the apron and nothing indicates any major damage, but he is still slowly rolling and then his pedals come to a stop. He's no longer going and Hunter Bogdan all of a sudden inexplicably stopping on the racing circuit. That is a safety hazard and the caution is going to come out as a result. And resulting, of course, with Hunter Bogdan down low and he is stalled, yellow flag is out and we are not quite sure why. 
Caution is out. Hunter Bogdan is dead zero. No pace and 37 laps to go. We'll get a safety yellow to bunch up the field as we've got a bit of confusion right now finding out what is going on. Yellow flag for the fourth time. It is a safety caution which brings us back down. Just like that, we're back under yellow and we're going to have ourselves a shorter showdown to get to the finish. And with the field now back at a standstill, Andrew Cootie leading the way. And the question now is, do the drivers come down a pit road one final time? Money stop might be in play this time through. And according to the drivers going down low, that it is. Drivers will come down a pit road this time by the Paintbrush 54, 154. Sees one more big cycle as drivers come in this time by. Field is going to be lining up on pit road yet again. And this is the final time all drivers will come through, which ends our pit strategy and brings us back to the norm, getting us to the green without any hesitation. Andrew Cootie leads, Ethan working the second, and now it's going to be Henry Kaloff in the podium as well as Pit Road is busy yet again. And as drivers come out of pit road this time through, out of pit road first will just barely be Andrew Cootie. Andrew going to find himself up at the head of the field. And the number nine machine is out up in front with 36 laps remaining. We've talked to Cootie quite a few times before this season, but once again, he's chasing a big, big achievement. Getting it back done at an oval for the number, of course, number nine of Andrew Cootie. He has not been able to get it done at an oval ever since our very first time at Daytona as the season opener live on FTN. Season two opener winning at Daytona, but ever since has simply not made it happen. Right now, that number nine machine going to be scored as your race leader, and we're going to try to get him in right now as we take a look at Andrew Cootie, your current race leader, out in front from Atlanta. Andrew Cootie leading the way with 36 laps left on the day. Been a short race so far, but still a lot of chaos. What's it going to take to go to the end? Uh, not dying. Uh, half the field has died uh, in massive accidents already. So um, we're just gonna hope for the best um i'm just trying to figure out um you know i'm just trying to figure out what we're doing um i do have an announcement post race if i make the if i make the uh uh podium or if you want to drag me post race we can do a thing because i do have an announcement to make for the his the future of foral um regarding just everything with trucks and all that uh, but being that we're going green here in a second it's i don't have time to do it so um so yeah if you guys want to if you want to drag me after the race if i don't make it then we can uh we can talk about that but uh the race has been pretty good we had a few good runs with uh ross and dustin there river was being river and Thurston and River were doing stuff, and <laughs> we've, we're just trying to keep it clean to the end. We just need points going into the playoffs. When I, I want to lock up that lit regular season championship, and I still got a, I still got a while to go before I can do that. So, yeah, I'm just thankful for the position we're in, and I uh, got a few teammates up here and a few buddies to work with. So, looking forward to it. And teammates keeping Andrew Cootie up at the head of the field. The number nine machine will get back into business yet again with 35 coming down to 34 laps remaining. Let's do it all over again for your fourth restart of the day. Cootie and Xander Prestige will work the front row and the green flags out. Led once more by Cootie. Once again, we're back on the way from Atlanta. Andrew Cootie going to remain side by side right now with Sander Prestige. Ross Corlett going to be then in third. And Ethan Workman's going to be in fourth. A double file, five rows deep. Then going back to guys like Hunter Whitlock. That's when it gets a bit less dicey. So far, aggression going to be seen up in front, but no major moves made as Sander Prestige is still chasing, leading a lap. Andrew Cootie's got his teammates right there with him and still has nothing to worry about. So far, this team has been unstoppable on the night, and that's how it's been from 
the start to the finish. Andrew Cudi has led every single restart or start of the race, and he's been able to keep that control from flag to flag up to this point. James Thurston, three laps down, gonna head off of pit road once again. Not Thurston's night, and not the usual James Thurston we're seeing here. Looks like Atlanta not treating him all too well as the field will come by. 69 laps in. It's been a very nice run so far for Andrew Cudi, and he's looking to wrap it up with just a few more laps left. He's come this far. Now the question is, what can he do? Lock it down and keep himself up there with only a few more laps in mind. Ross Corlett then going to be second, and Henry Cowell off their third. They are going to be single file. Top six. Then going back to guys like Trippy and Hunter Whitlock, you'll see them get a bit more side by side now from a little less aggression on back. Now a bit more. Whitlock going to see Ethan a workman go down low. It looks like Xander Prestige there all the same. And with 31 laps left, almost 30 on the dot. Now time to see what you can do to set yourself up for a good finish. So far, every driver, no matter where they are in the pack, they know one thing. This CCH Motorsports crew, they have been dominant. They've been able to lead almost every lap. Andrew Cootie and his team have been on control of this one since the beginning. And if you want to win this race, you have to get by them by any means. Maybe not any means per se, but you've got to think of what you can do to get around this team up in front. With such a high degree of control so late into the race, it looks like nobody able to break through it. And you cannot let that happen. And of course, the less time you have, the harder it becomes to make the most important maneuvers. And right now, the importance of making it by will be a little bit more interrupted by Dustin Pickle getting destroyed. Caution is out. Front end is all but gone. Yellow flag going to be back in the air. Let's find out just what happened as the number 21 from running with the best team in the business tonight now is back on pit road. 29 laps remaining. Let's take a look on back and find out just what happened here at we take our instant replay here on FTN. And how about this? Dustin Pickle looking to be down to the inside line here before things get really dicey. The number 21 machine having a very good run. Maybe had a chance at getting a good podium or a race win. All oh, net code contact with Anthony Trippy will bring us back to the yellow. Trippy's gonna then immediately tag Dustin and they're gonna be sliding into each other once again. 21 machine gets destroyed. The front end is almost entirely gone and just like that, CCH Motorsports leaves one driver in the dust Dustin Pickle loses so much time I don't think there's anything more he can do two laps down front hood it is gone and now he's going to be way off the pace here as we look back at Andrew Cudi up ahead of the field Cudi leads with 28 laps remaining the last few laps are just ahead and now time to solidify yourself as a contender if you have that pace you gotta use it here now where it's going to go to waste and you'll have to move on to the next race for any more opportunities on the season. Now, of course, tonight at Atlanta, one of those wild card races where just about anyone has a chance to get it done. But it's going to become a bit different as the remainder of the season comes into play. The regular season, we're still in the thick of it here, but you've got to think about what is next. Atlanta might be the biggest chance for anyone to lock themselves into the playoffs, getting those crucial points, getting a race win. But from here on out, We've got Michigan and we've got Richmond. Those are the final two races of our regular season. And then we get into the nitty gritty and find ourselves with a championship race all throughout the rest of October, deep into November. That is what's going to conclude this season. Not only will we have ourselves, of course, some exciting races to wrap off the regular season, but the playoffs are going to be just as intense as well. 40 laps at the Glen, Talladega, Bristol, Dover, Las Vegas, and Homestead all to finish off the campaign. So right now, if you're these drivers, doesn't matter where you are, you know tonight could be the difference between making it into the dance and not being invited at all. The playoffs are so close, it's now or never and the mindset is setting in. Andrew Cootie's already locked in. He's had a fantastic season to this point. 
but maybe the drivers behind them right now, they don't have what it takes to really be so sure of themselves. You gotta get that win, get a few top fives, and then you'll be good to go. 27 laps remaining, and the choose rule back in effect. Looks like Cootie gonna choose high. Dustin Pickle gonna not be there, but Ross Corlett will go up to the top side too. Henry Kaloff, Xander Prestige, and Hunter Whitlock. They'll take low. It's going to be continuing the battle between Cootie and the rest of the field. Does the dominant man come home on top or does an underdog driver pull it through? That remains the question. Caution still out with 27 to go. We'll head back green with only 26. And if you made it this far, it's only going to get even more exciting. For those tuning in for the first time tonight, stick around. I've been your host for tonight's broadcast, David Kreutz. And now, with only 26 laps left here at Atlanta. It's going to be a dash to the finish. If you got anything left in the tank, you ought to use it now and find out how far you can go until that white flag and the checkered flag immediately there after. 26 laps to go. This time by as the pace car leaves the field yet again. Green flag's going to be out and Andrew Cootie will lead the way as we're back on our move here in Hampton. Andrew Cootie going to remain out in front. He's got his teammates, of course, of course, Ross Corlett, not to mention now Alex Jones helping, and Ethan Workman there, too. It looks like now, even though it's only two drivers working together, Andrew Cootie still got some major assistance, and Henry Kaloff's going to try to work it down the line as well, taking that number 63 machine down to the bottom groove. Now he's got himself a chance to the race lead. Down low, Kaloff's got it as the field flies right by. Now the 63's got the advantage, and he'll take Xander Brissett stage there too. The underdogs are now taking it up in front and just like that Henry Kaloff's got the race lead for the first time tonight. My oh my this is the biggest move for Henry Kaloff all night long and now with this advantage he'll take him down to the line all over again and keep himself ahead of Andrew Cootie. New race leader it is the number 63. And just like that, Kaloff has the edge that is absolutely necessary. If you want to get it done, you got to have help. And now Xander Prestige stepping up to the plate. You've also got Hunter Whitlock. You've got Michael Deitch there too. All of a sudden, the drivers are now pulling their weight. And then some bringing the CCH crew down further in the order. And it's going to bring Henry Kaloff, with the best chance he's had to win all season, back up in front. 23 laps to go live on FTN. The paper. 54, 154, all comes down to this. Henry Kaloff going to lead the way. We come down to 22 to go. As always, we're going to crank it up with the best camera providers on iRacing. Track cams for Gorman to ride the wonderful onboard cameras we're seeing tonight, and they're giving us all the views, not only tonight, but for over 100 car and track combinations on the platform. Let's crank it up with 22 laps to go, courtesy of trackcams22.com.
And with only 17 laps left on the board tonight in Atlanta, Henry Kaloff leads the way and finds himself in the best position he's been in all night long and all season long. This could be the moment of truth for the number 63 machine who's looking to get it done for the very first time as a race winner in the 4 World Cup Series. And as he was oh so close last week, tonight might be the night. He was oh so close at Pocono. Second place. The strategy did not play out and eventually it went the way of James Thurston. Now, once again, it's Kaloff in the position to maybe come through with another win. And now Ethan Workman looking to go for it down to the bottom side. Ethan Workman's got the top spot. Number 23 machine takes the race lead and now finds himself up ahead for just a brief moment. Still back and forth as they go up in front of the field. And it's going to be a slugfest till the very end. One driver might have the lead through turns one and two. Another driver might have it through three and four. And different drivers might be leading through the straightaways. That's how close the racing is going to get here. They're going to be swapping the lead back and forth like it is nothing. And it's going to show more and more how aggressive and how risky these drivers will have to get as time is running out. Workman now fading back to the bottom of the field and take a look at James Thurston. He's one lap down right now. He is not in the race leading battle, but it looks like now he finds himself up there with the best of them, racing as if he is one of those up in the leading pack. Andrew Cootie and Ross Corlett are now up ahead. Now it looks like it's going to be Cootie working with Ross Corlett with Corlett leading, and it's going to be James Thurston now up there with Ethan Workman. Workman's going to take it down low with the number four. Thurston opts to take it down to the bottom side and bring the rest of the field with them. Maybe that's going to work, but it's a risky strategy trusting a lap machine, and we don't see it work out all too often, but that's the call for Thurston here as he remains on the low side of the track. And some risks they're being taken. Some drivers are going to be using different grooves. Some drivers trusting different people. And it's not about what you know at Atlanta now. It's about who you know. The connections, the relationships in the field. That is what matters the most. Just like that, it's going to be Andrew Cootie and Ross Corlett once again ahead by a wider margin. But Henry Kaloff is still there. Just like that indeed. It looks like the CCH crew are able to bounce back from some early struggles. And all of a sudden, it's going to be now these two up in front. The Chevy Camaros lead the way. One, two, three. Then Brandon Rizmo are going to be in fourth. And that will be his career best finish. And this is about as close as he's gotten to a race win and even a podium all season long. So if he can break out, maybe take Henry Callow there with them, it could be the perfect opportunity to make it happen and get some new drivers in the podium as opposed to reoccurring veterans. Now, Ross Corlett still does not have a win, but we've seen him on the podium many times before. It was a Final Four contender last season. He knows a thing or two about being competitive even if he has not found victory lane just yet in his career. He knows what it's all about in the highest pressure situations and now with that knowledge and his teammate right behind him, there's a chance to come home on top for the very first time. Corlett leads. 10 laps to go and the team up in front, CCH Motorsports has the edge in the paintbrush 54-154. It is all going to come down to this final set of laps. Corlett let Cootie Kaloff. That is still your podium. Back of the field going to be a bit dicier. Whitlock going to be right there with Anthony Trippi, Xander Prestige, and James Thurston. But Thurston is fading back now and not much more he can do unless he gets a bit more support on the low side. The bottom is not going to work out and they're fading back further and further into the single digits. Ross Corlett leads the way with nine laps remaining now and Cootie continues to support his teammate who needs a race victory if he wants any chance of advancing into the playoffs. And all of a sudden now, you'll see it's going to be a bit of movement there down to the low side for Max Molina. Molina's been quiet all race long, but all of a sudden he's there too. And don't count out your defending champion. He's already won one time this season. Maybe he's got a bit more in his sleeve than he can use it when this comes down to the finish. It's mattering more and more each and every lap. Molina now going to slot himself up into fourth, and you can see him there in the number 45 machine. Taking a look inside the cockpit here for Max Molina. He's right behind Henry Kaloff, and Kaloff is right there for the taking. The 45 machine will see whether or not he opts to work with Kaloff, but maybe these two can break away from Cootie and Corlett and try to work on something for their own benefit. That could be the move, or maybe Max Molina goes on his own and sees 
believes who he can bring down. He's got a lot of trust in this field, a known winner, a known champion. So if there's anyone you want to work with in the field, maybe Max Molina shoots to the top of that list just off his experience experience and his success alone. He knows what it's like to be a winner here in Foral almost more than anyone else in their careers. And just like that, Molina takes it down to the bottom side yet again. He's got it down low and now it looks like some more competition for Henry Kaloff. Thurston, Max Molina, Xander Prestige, Hunter Whitlock all together with six laps remaining. This could be it. Now Molina's got to run down to the bottom side. James Thurston's going to help him out here and the run is getting big bigger and bigger. Now some more speed down low, going at speeds of over 185 miles an hour. Molina's got the pace and has the bottom side as well. Just like that, it's going to be a new wave of life in the below side. One lap machine going to shuffle the field up. Wesley Kutznov days down low. Luckily, he does not get involved, but they're going to go three wide now for the race lead. Ross Corlett's going to have his leave his teammate alone. Andrew Cootie gets shuffled back, and with five laps remaining, all of a sudden now it's going to be Molina and Ross Corlett head to head with a bit of Henry Kaloff still spliced in. Kaloff takes some three wide for the race lead. The number 63 is to the point, and there's a new man on top. Henry Kaloff gets himself out there and now is going to have to defend on Ross Corlett who now has Andrew Cooney all the same. When Andrew Cooney went away it looked like it would not be permanent and he gets it back quicker than expected even still. Four laps to go. The juggernauts are up top. The underdogs are down low. Max Molina, James Thurston both pushing Henry Kaloff. They're going to go back up top instead. Now Allegiance is going to be pledged to the high side but James Thurston keeps his loyalty and keeps himself on the bottom instead of going up top like Max Molina. Four laps to go, this time by, make it three this time around. Ross Corlett's got that lead, but it is going to come down to whether or not Max Molina peels out, and now he looks to it, doesn't go for it. Henry Kaloff keeps him in check, at least for now. And it's going to be a game of checks and balances here. Drivers trying to find out whether or not they can make a move. They see the drivers down low or up high, cutting them off. You got to stop it and wait a little bit more. The question is, though, is there even time to wait? Corlett and Cootie are building a bit more time each and every corner. And with such a big advantage having a teammate around you, you really don't know what you can do when you're alone. But Molina now has a bit of help from Ethan Workman. Brandon Reismiller goes for it as well. Two laps to go this time by three miles remaining. Remaining, and now Max Molina, your defending champion, finds himself up in front, down low. But Cootie and Corlett break out once again. Workman's now going to be that back bumper of Max Molina if there is any opportunity. Looking for the rear view panel here. The 23 is right with them. And this is what it all comes down to. This is what matters. One lap to go. The final lap is out here in Atlanta. Ross Corlett's got the lead. Henry Kaloff, no chance right now. He'll have to build up a big run if there's anything left for him. Number nine of Andrew Cudi remains just behind the race leader. Teammates are still contending and Kaloff's going to take out Andrew Cudi and leave Ross Corlett alone. Can Workman get anything of it? Not quite sure and coming off a of corner four, it's a certainty. New race winner, CCH Motorsports has another. Ross Corlett will win his first career race in Atlanta, getting it done for the first time it is a new race winner in the Paintbrush 54, 154. Andrew Cootie defended until the last moment, and it cost him a finish, but it doesn't cost the team. New race winner, the Rod Car number 91, and just like that, Corlett is on top. Man, oh man, Ross Corlett gets it done for the first time in his career, and he's been waiting for this one an awful long time. Let's take a look at the results before he burns down the house here in the virtual Atlanta Motor Speedway. First time winner, another on the season, and it's going to be Ross Corlett over Ethan Workman in second, Max Molina third, and Xana Prestige position number four. And from there, are going to be Brandon Rismiller in fifth with Michael Deitch, then sixth, Hunter Whitlock seventh, and Anthony Trippi in eighth with Henry Kaloff, position number nine. Going to be Andrew Cootie, your pole sitter, fading back to tenth. And then from there, are going to be Alex Jones, eleventh, James Thurston, twelfth, Wesley Kutznuff going to be in thirteenth, and Hunter Bogdan then in fourteenth. As Joseph Lewis comes through for the fifteenth spot, it's Chance Parker, sixteenth, River Page is going to be eighteenth, just behind Dustin Pickle in seventeenth, and Sean Rose, nineteenth, with Alex. 
Alexander Balderas in 20th, and Bryce Hamrick and Joaquin Stewart round out the field as your race winner begins a celebration. And as Ross Corlett's going to park it now on the start-finish line, gets it stopped and goes one more time, the number 91 has done it for the first time in his career. Ross Corlett is a Fordal Cup Series winner. Let's get him in right now and find out what's going on. As Corlett gets it done, it is the number 91 on top. And with such a thrilling finish right behind Corlett, you got to cruise to victory. And the number 91 team, for the first time, comes through with the checkered flag. Rod Carr's Green Machine wins tonight. How do you feel? Oh my god, man. Finally! Finally! I've been so close so many times and oh my gosh. First off, what a race. That was awesome. Shout out to Andrew Cudi. He had my back the whole time. We, we made a plan saying if we were 1-2 if we at the end, we were going to stay committed to each other. We did. I just cannot believe it. Fi we finally got to put a full race together, and it, it just feels so good, man. And oh, my goodness. Start to finish, you and Andrew Cooney had full control of the situation. Didn't matter if it was the first lap or the final lap. It all worked out, and you drivers kept it up there. Keep that pace, and it looks like the strategy worked out very well. Absolutely. I can't, I can't hear you. Uh, Cooney got me off at four for... for um, just a little bit too hard, and I got I got a little bit loose. I saved it. <laughs> that, at that that moment, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just choked it again. But uh, luckily, we saved it and we were able to get back together. But uh, just what a race! And you know, there's I mean, they they gave it everything they had. You know, they like these guys are really good uh, here at Atlanta and also at Daytona and Talladega. It's all it's always fierce on a uh, on super speedways. But uh, again, like just to be able to put it together, like. For a season and a half, I've been consistent, just ha haven't quite put in a full race together, and to finally do it here, especially the track that I've uh, driven on doing a racing experience, shout out to them. But uh, yeah, it's, this is awesome, man. It's going to be, a, I got work early in the morning, but we're definitely going to party before I go to bed tonight. And putting it all together will not only be, of course, great to get that first win, but also gives you a much better chance to make the playoffs with only two more races remaining in the race to get in. Michigan and Richmond up next to finish off the regular season. How confident are you with what's left? Oh, my goodness. After the last couple races we've had, it's been a struggle. You know, wrecked out the last two weeks. Just all my momentum from the start of the season was gone. Like, I knew, like, this is a race I had circled saying hey like we need to run well here and so yeah this uh, this brings a new life I into the season and you know brings a lot of momentum into not just our team but uh in the 91 but also uh cch and bringing new life into the team getting it done this number 91 machine you know you want to make a statement this season it looks like you just did first career win atlanta you get it done tonight anything else you'd like to add uh, uh, well, got a few people to shout out. Uh, shout out to everybody at CCH. Uh, sh shout out to my mom. Um, if y'all know, she's been, she's had some health issues. Uh, I love you, mom. Uh, shout out to our sponsors, uh, Rod Carr. Love you, Rod. Um, James Allen Stingray is my summer league swim team, and also our new sponsor, uh, Smart Swimming, my club swim team. Uh, shout out, shout out to Michael and everybody. It's gonna be really cool to show, uh, show everybody at work uh, tomorrow morning. So, um. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, appreciate y'all for putting on the broadcast. Can't wait for next week. And there we have it. Already looking forward to what's next on the season. Ross Corlett gets it done and finds himself a winner in the Paintbrush 54-154. Thank you for your time.
Appreciate it. Thank you. And there we have it. Ross Corlett going to be on the move. A spirited drive gets him up in front. And it looks like Ethan Workman holds on for another podium. Second place of the day with a chaotic finish here in Atlanta. Well, all I got to say about this finish, I did not expect getting second there, especially with the position I was in on the final lap. But those two wrecking helped me out a lot. And I did not expect today. <laughs> Still able to sure. hold on, I'll tell you this much. And how was it with that last lap in mind? How did you approach it? Oh, I think that high lane, like me, me and Molina tried making a move to the bottom against the against the teammates, but that bottom was like too tough to race on the older tires, and the high line had too much momentum. So that's just what I took on the final lap and hoped uh, whatever I could salvage worked, and it did for me. And able to salvage every position there at the very end. A very chaotic night, but we got some good long runs in. So how was it working with New Atlanta? I believe only the second time we've gone there with this league. So still, some drivers adjusting. Well, I'd say the race is pretty tame. I mean, I'd say more tame than I thought it would be, especially at a plate track like Atlanta, where you go two two by two or possibly three wide at some points if you want to. But like I said before, I'd say the racing was all right, but definitely that top lane on the long run had the advantage based on tires. And putting together the long runs and the short, coming home with a very solid second place finish, keeping that momentum up with Michigan up next on the tour. What's going to take to keep the power down and look for even better results? Well, with these next couple of tracks that are coming up here, I feel like I feel really confident. Like I said, after that auto club interview, I feel real confident with these next couple of tracks in Michigan, Richmond, Bristol, and maybe even Watkins Glen in the next four tracks coming up on the schedule. I mean, I feel like I'm going to be pretty fast at all of those tracks whenever I can on either short run or the longer run speeds. And a lot of confidence with the rest of the season in mind. Another solid finish for the Ethan Workman 23 machine. Once again up there till the very end. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the Hub Motorsports, my team. I'd like to thank Leander for the paint scheme with the wind sticker on it. And I would like to thank uh, Max and Brandon at the end trying to help out. Uh, but couldn't get the result done. But... We still got P2, P3, and we still got top like six, seven finishes out of it. So I'd say that's really good for all of our points mainly. And keeping up with that points race, Ethan Workman comes home for a second place finish tonight in the Four Cup Series Paintbrush 54 154. Thank you for your time. And with Workman on the move, one more driver to talk to at the end of the race. Max Molina rounds out the podium in the number 45 machine and gets it done in the third spot. How do you feel after a hectic race in Atlanta? I'm just glad it's over, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a very, very intense, intense race uh, just from the get go from, you know, everyone running double wide from the beginning and making moves. They probably shouldn't have that early, which it seemed it took out. You know, a lot of uh, fast cars in the in the early going, but uh, you know that's why that's why I just stayed in the back and just <laughs> rode around until you know we had about like <laughs> a dozen of us, if not more, um, in the pack. And you know, I was like, when when I saw there was like at least ten or twelve of us that clean cars up front in the pack uh, before the late late race yellow, I knew I was like, you know, I can probably get a get away with a a good finish here, and uh, you know. <laughs> Barely made it through. Uh, Cootie and, and uh, Henry wrecking themselves in turn three on that last lap. You know, I was, was kind of hoping I was in, you know, Ethan Ethan's uh, spot there, uh, being able to get, get second and be that lucky. But, you know, I'll, I'll take a podium any day of the week. It'll definitely help me out in the points, thankfully, with um, Thurston having a, a bad day and finishing a lot down. Um, you know, I, from my cockpit, I looked over when we crossed the line. I didn't think I was going to get third. And then I saw the, the standings. Uh, update and I showed me in third it's just barely so I was kind of grateful I got that position from Xander but you know just um just grateful to to come away clean without any scratches on the car really 
and getting that clean finish what matters at the end of the day here and you got yourself a win already tonight it's always a wild card to Atlanta so what was the mentality heading in of course with that race victory a lot of these drivers didn't have it made it for those guys who didn't have a victory to be extremely over aggressive, um, such as like River Page and 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 Sean Rowe and people up there. Uh, just reckon, you know, a couple times in the at the beginning, and just stuck with my uh, you know Dehub teammates back there with uh, Brandon, uh, Chance, and uh, Ethan, just right in the back, hoping you know we can all make it through. Uh, the big wrecks, and unfortunately, I think Ethan and Chance got into the wrecks in the early going, and Chance got the worst of it, unfortunately. But you know, it, me and Brandon, I think we're the two out of the four of us that were there in the race. I think five of us actually with uh, Wesley, but um, that's it, two of us out of the five uh, were the only ones that kept the car clean and didn't get involved in any wrecks, thankfully. And <laughs> I think Brandon <laughs> made it through a really, really close call with um, one of the wrecks. Uh, I think that set up the the final like the late race restart. So, you know, just working with teammates and just hanging in the back, keeping the car clean was a mentality going in really. And I made sure I communicated with that with Brandon, Ethan, and Chance. We all we all understood the assignment to to go into the race and just you know just be very very cautious and how to take the runs and just you know be be careful who we draft with and you know what's going to happen. Kind of calling out Rex ahead and uh, you know just. Working together and just chilling. And keeping calm with a very risky race ahead, Max Molina gets it through at Atlanta for a third place finish. Of course, Michigan up next. Anything else you'd like to add before we head on to Northeast Auto Club? Uh, just, you know, shout out to my sponsors, Burnt Rubber, Burnt Rubber Racing Warehouse, and uh, shout out to all my teammates in the hub. You know, like I mentioned before, Brandon, Ethan, Chance and Wesley, and also a little shout out to Leander for spotting for for Brandon there and, and Cody for just being the spectator in the crowd and just, you know, calling out things here and there. Uh, it was definitely a, a fun time, you know, just talking with them and seeing what they're seeing up, up above. And there we have it. Once again, Max Molina finds himself in a third place. Number 45 machine holds on for another podium on the season. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. And there we have it. Max Molina going to be there on the move. And it looks like Brandon Rismal are going to be in chat right now with the number 95 machine. It looks like that was his dog on the car. How about that for the Chewy number 95 machine? Great to have you aboard just to wrap off this one. Fifth place, not a bad finish at all. And Brandon Rismler, I believe, tying your career best finish, if not besting it. Great to have your dog on the side there as you clawed your way through in the Chewy number 95 for a fifth place finish. Top three goes as follows. Max Molina third, Ethan Workman second, and Ross Corlett as your race winner for the first time in his career getting it done on top at Atlanta. We're in for a doubleheader tomorrow tomorrow night for me and road to pro of course is there as well at dirt bristol that's going to be a hell of a show and we cannot wait to bring that to you exclusively on ftn in addition the iora cup series races at auto club tomorrow and also the highline racing league heads back to darlington for the services and supplies southern 200 three great races one great night we'd hope to have you there as well as always i've been your host for tonight's broadcast david kreutz great to have you all aboard watching and if you did enjoy be sure to leave a like and subscribe your support is always greatly appreciated we couldn't do any of this without the support you've given us all throughout the season we thank you all for watching this presentation of the four World cup series and the paintbrush 54 154 from our studios to your homes here at FTN, we hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. And if you did once more, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Once again, thank you all for stopping by as viewers, and we hope to see you whenever we're live again on FTN. Thank you all once more for your immense support, and we hope you all have a fantastic night.